Hey, good morning, church. It's great to be with you again. I hope you've had a good week since we were able to uh, chat last week out of John chapter 15. We're going to be back there again. As I shared with you, we're going to focus primarily on verse 7 and some just some thoughts, some challenges that I've encountered as I've uh, dug into uh, that particular verse. But before we get there, kids, I want to remind you, where's Jesus? Uh, you've done a great job giving me some stuff uh, on the picture that I showed you last week and all the nativity scriptures, so good job. I'm proud of you. I've got another picture for you. Mike's going to bring that up so you can see that. What you're going to find this time, though, is it's going to go to the other end of the Gospels. Last week, we started in the beginning of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, particularly Matthew and Luke. This time, you're going to go to the toward the end of those books, and all four will have some references to that picture that you just saw. Now, there are three objects in that picture. If you look closely uh, in that object, there are three different elements there, and you should be able to find some uh, good references of Scripture, several of them that refer to that. Same routine, once you find them, make notes of which book you found it in and which chapter and verse and get your name in the comments down there and I'm going to be keeping track and we'll settle up uh, once we get back together once we're able to do that again anyway. So, have at it. Good work, guys. I'm proud of you. I want you learning how to use your Bibles. Okay? And it's okay if mom and dad help you on some of this search. They'll probably learn some things too as they go along. Okay? All right. Good deal. John chapter 15, verse 7. I'm going to assume you've been spending some time there this week, so I'm just going to read that one single verse when it says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Well, let's pray. Father, we take a moment just to uh, thank you again for an opportunity to connect. But Lord, interesting times we find ourselves in, some challenging days, but you are with us and you have been faithful and we know that you will continue to be. Lord, I thank you for the time that you and I have spent just wrestling around in this verse. Well, me wrestling and you instructing and, and uh, thank you for some progress that I think we've made. I know there's much more to make, and I pray that you'll just prompt my mind and my heart to share some of what we've experienced and, and wrestle through here uh, with reference to this text. Uh, we yield to your word. We invite the work of your Holy Spirit in our lives. Teach us now, O oh Spirit, I pray in Jesus' name, and amen. So as I shared with you last week, I had, for several weeks before, just been sitting with this verse John 15 7 if you abide in me and my words abide in you ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you there's some challenges to that verse it seems to be very certain very clear that our wishing our asking and his doing will align themselves and we should be expecting that to happen. I'll share with you just a little bit of a story. There was, there was a time not too long ago that I um, had made a trip to a local hospital and, and knew I was stepping into a pretty difficult situation, pretty difficult um, scenario. And, and sure enough, when I got there, I met a rather distraught uh, family member who had trouble speaking outside of just saying to me, we need a miracle. And um, my response was, well, then let's pray for one. Um, it's not the first time I've encountered that kind of request over many years of ministry, and I trust you have been in that situation yourself as well, how circumstances put you in a place very obviously that God was going to have to intervene to do something or the outcome was not going to be good, at least from an earthly perspective. 
And I remember walking out of that place by other rooms and encountering other family members and knowing that they too are in great need of miracle. And this is a verse that's not a new one to me. As a matter of fact, I, whenever I read this verse now, I remember a song that we used to sing many years ago uh, that just recounted the words of this verse. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will and it will be done for you. But we all have stories and testimonies about asking and wishing and it not happening. Nothing happened. Or the exact opposite happened. We prayed for life and there was no recovery. We prayed for a saved relationship and that relationship was not saved. We prayed for God's intervention and it did not happen. So did Jesus mean what He said here? Or didn't He? Let's take a minute and slow down and just, just let this let this soak in a bit. And let's not get too quick to just look at the asking whatever you wish part. Usually that's where we go. But did you notice first there were conditions involved? Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. Those are the conditions that he states first to the asking whatever you wish. Now that abiding we encountered last time when the image of the, the Jesus who is the true vine and the branches and in order for there to be fruitfulness, that branch has to stay connected to, has to remain or dwell or make its home in that true vine. It can't become disconnected. Jesus starts this promise by saying, or pointing to that reality again, that one of the prerequisites to the asking you whatever you wish is that you are abiding in me, that you have been tending that relationship, that there is an intimacy that has taken you into places with him that you have not been before, that you are developing that, that reality, that you're sitting long, and often at a table of fellowship with the Father and with the Son and with the Holy Spirit, that you're becoming increasingly comfortable there, that it is characterizing your life more and more so that that flow of, of, of life-giving reality is coming to you more and more uninhibited transformation is taking place. You are abiding in Him and, and it is less likely that you aren't there than, less, than more likely that you are. It's, it, it's, it's becoming who you are. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, Jesus said. You remember last week's message when he said early on, he said, you are already clean or, or pruned because of the word which I have spoken to you. And we talked about how it is the word of Jesus, the word of God that brings that cleansing or that pruning that, that he begins to clear away things that are not intended to be a part of our lives that will no longer hold that place of value for us outside of our relationship with Him. There will be no more supremacy in our lives but Jesus and our attachment to that true vine. And it will be His Word that makes that true. He comes back to that in verse 7, If you abide in Me and My words abide in you. The presence of His Word in us is going to change us, folks. That we, I've been trying to think of metaphors that, that would have to, to marinate, you know? You get ready to do some grilling, oh, the masters talk about the importance of, of the seasoning and, and the marinades, and you, you put that meat in there and you just let it soak. And what happens is those flavors get deep within the meat, and all of a sudden there's hardly any separation between the two that we 
marinate ourselves in the Word of God, that we saturate ourselves with His Word, that it just takes in a presence within us that changes who we are. If we abide in Him and, and, and His words abide in us, then He says, ask whatever you will and it will be done for you. Ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. I'm assuming you're drawing some conclusions right now about those preconditions. I hope that you're thinking along the line that if that if I am abiding in Jesus and His words are abiding in me, that one of the things that will undeniably be influenced is going to be the things that I'm asking. I'm not going to be asking for things that aren't going to be aligned with His heart and His desires and His attentions because they will not have had its importance. Those things that are spurious or less valuable to us will have long ago been pruned away. We will have been pruned or cleaned by His Word. Our relationship with Him will have taken its place of rightful preeminence. We will not be pushing or resisting His reign and rule in our lives any longer. We will have taken that on as the guiding influence of our lives. And one of the things that will be certainly impacted by are those things that we are wishing that we are asking for and it's going to change it and as a result then he says if you abide in me and my words abide in you ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you <laughs> Mike is smiling here at me right now because just before we started I removed a cat from the background here and put it out on the back porch and that cat has been whining and it has been whining because I am not giving it what it wants. It's going to continue to whine. The only thing that's going to keep that cat from whining is if I give that cat a boot out the back. Gently, mind you, but I invite that cat to go out, on, out into the back. See, it's going to keep asking until then. So see how you can work in anything into the midst of a message. It's going to change our asking. When we have aligned ourselves with Jesus in such a unique way and we have become saturated, immersed in His Word, it's going to change the things we ask about. John never got over that. My good friend David recently reminded me of that, that the next time John wrote another account, we call it 1 John, the first letter of John. And it's going to, the same concept is going to come up there in chapter 5. And specifically, we'll start reading in verse 13. And here's how it goes. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. I love how John, he did this back in the Gospel of John 2. If you read chapter 20, you'll find his purpose for writing that one. Here he says, here's my purpose. For those of you who have believed, believed, I want you to know that you have eternal life. And then he gives all these evidences of how you can recognize the presence of eternal life in your life. And one of those is this. This is the confidence which we have before him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request which we have asked from Him. John comes back to the same thing that he heard Jesus talk about in chapter 15, verse 7. This whole concept of our asking and His answering. And here He says... If we ask anything according to His will, we know He hears us, and if we know that He hears us, we know that we'll have it. As we grow in our intimate relationship with Him, as we learn to abide in Him and allow His words to abide in us, what's going to be transformed is the content of our asking. We will be increasingly asking those things that are consistent with the will of God. Now, we're going to have to learn. We're going to have to groom this. I'm going to show you another text in just a minute. But I am convinced that one of the byproducts of the eternal life in us, our growing relationship with Jesus. See John 17, 3, where he identifies eternal life as knowing 
God and His Son. God the Father and His Son, John 17, 3. That's eternal life. As we develop that relationship, that intimate relationship with Him, it's going to change our asking. And as we are asking things that are conforming with His will, He will be answering those prayers. Said, Jesus said it in John 15, 7. John says it, repeats that same concept here in 1 John chapter 5. The challenge that we have before us, that we have to learn our way through, we're going to find referred to in James chapter 4. James, verse 1, he says, What is the source of quarrels and conflicts among you? He says, How come we're having so much trouble getting along? He says, Is not the source your pleasures that wage war in your members? You lust and do not have, so you commit murder. You are envious and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. Do you hear? You know, we have these desires in us, and when we can't get them satisfied, then we lash out. We find ways to ensure we get what we want. James says, do you not realize this? He says, you do not have because you do not ask. We've been talking about asking. Jesus said, it is possible for you to ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. James says, or John said in his chapter 5, he says, when we ask according to the will of God, we know He hears us, and we know we'll have it. James reiterates that. He says, you're not getting what you want because you don't ask. Oh, and there are some times when you're asking, he says, and you're not getting it. He tells us why. And he says, you ask, this is verse 3 of chapter 4 of James, you ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures. Self-seeking, self-centered, lust-driven prayers. Where we come to God, we want to treat Him like a vending machine. And we just want to drop in a few uh, select prayers and get whatever we want in return to get whatever we wish answered from Him. When it's really got nothing to do with the presence of Jesus, it's not been driven by our relationship with Him or His Word abiding with us, within us. It, it's not got anything to do with the will of God. It's simply something within us that is not content and wants circumstance changed. The growth process that we can experience is that as we learn to abide in Christ and we welcome His Word increasingly in its transforming, its cleansing, its pruning power to come into our lives to change us, it's going to transform our asking so that our asking is more consistently aligning itself with His will. And as a result, then the promise that John 15, 7 said, Ask whatever you will, and it will be done for you. What a fantastic promise. What an incredible byproduct of learning to abide in Christ. Of prioritizing that as the essential in our lives welcoming the transformation that it brings and seeing Him bring much glory as we are invited to partner with Him in His work in the world through His kingdom and our prayers. Oh, beloved, look for that opportunity. Difficult days are around us. <laughs> He's not lost track. He's right there giving us opportunity to learn to pray in accordance with His will and to see those prayers answered. Let me pray for you right now. Father, thank You for the truth of Your Word and the invitation to immerse ourselves deeper and deeper into that consistent place of knowing you. Oh, not that we'll ever 
not that we'll ever satisfy the depths of who you are, not that we'll ever fully explore, but that's the beauty of it. All the way home, we have an open invitation to know you, and we'll never plumb the depths. But oh, the promise is that as we abide in you and your word abides in us, we can see even our asking and receiving transformed. We can learn to pray according to your will and then sit back and watch you pull it all together. Father, right now we live in some tension. We don't always know how to ask as we ought to ask. We are still prone to ask selfishly that we may spend it on our own pleasures. Help us to grow past that. Help us to learn. Help us to be true people of prayer, aligning ourselves with your work in this day. In Jesus' name I pray, and amen. Hey, God bless you all. Have a great week. Take care of each other. We'll see you next week.